Okay, so if we have a look at this one that you had for homework, uh, it says a car is travelling along a straight horizontal road. It takes 120, 120 seconds to travel between two sets of traffic lights, which are 2,145 metres apart. Right, now we get to the interesting part. It says the car starts from rest at the first set of traffic lights, moves with constant acceleration for 30 seconds until its speed is 22. The car maintains this speed for t seconds. It then moves with constant deceleration coming to rest at the second set of traffic lights. So we know that this distance along here is t, and we know that this time over here is 120 because it told us that it was 120. So I'm sure that first part was fine um, to sketch in the space the speed time graph for the motion of the car between the two sets of traffic lights. The second thing it wants us to do is to find the value of t. What's that actually asking for us to do? work out the area. We know that the area is 2,145, because that comes up in the question, OK? This is a trapezium, so we should do it using our area of a trapezium. We either remember that as a half A plus B H, or it's the average of the parallel sides multiplied by the gap between them. So our parallel sides, our 2,145, is the average of T plus 120 multiplied by the gap in between them, that gap is 22. So we get 2,145 is equal to 11 t plus 120. 2,145 divided by 11, 195. So we get 195 is t plus 120. So t is 75 seconds. So we've got the speed time graph done. We've got that t is 75 seconds. This is the part that I knew there would be some difficulty with. And it's because it's sort of like a logic kind of reasoning question that's here, OK? I'm sure you were tempted by the question we did at the end of last lesson, where we drew two graphs at the same time. This one actually doesn't even require you to draw the second graph of the motorcyclist. It actually says a motorcycle leaves the first set of traffic lights 10 seconds after the car has left the first set of traffic lights. So it started at the same point as the car, but it just left a little bit later. The motorcycle moves from rest with constant acceleration, A meters per second, and passes the car at a point A, which is 990 meters from the first set of traffic lights. So just have a little think for a second. They started at the same position, not necessarily at the same time. They started, the motorcycle started 10 seconds later. But when they pass by each other, the car is 990 meters away from the traffic lights. So how far has the motorcycle traveled? So the motorcycle has traveled 990 meters. How far has the car traveled? 990 meters, because it's saying at the same point. That's how far they've traveled at that point there. Now, a lot of people, I imagine, were trying to, uh, for this part C where it says, find the time it takes for the motorcycle to move from the first set of traffic lights to the point A. I imagine you were all trying to look at the motorcycle. And maybe what you did is you went to your graph and you said, OK, well, I'm going to draw some kind of acceleration of the motorcycle. But there's a logic that we can use here that doesn't require us to do anything to do with the motorcycle. In fact, we can use the logic to think about the car. What could I do? What could I find out with 990 meters and the car? Yeah, I could find out how long does it take for the car to travel 990 meters. If I know how long it takes for the car, if I work out the time it takes for the car to do 990 meters, how long would it take? How, how would I find out how long it takes for the motorcycle? Just take away 10 seconds from it, because it left 10 seconds later. So this question doesn't really even require you to have a think about the, uh, the motorcycle. You can just think about the car for this question. Now, we know that the area under the graph for the car has to be 990. So this time, it's going to look a little bit different. So for part D of the question, which I'll do in a different color so it's clear that we're talking about a different part, we need the area underneath it to be 990. Is it going to be in this section for the area, or is it going to be in this section? Why is it going to be in that section? There's something in the question that tells me it's going to be that full section. Red one? Um, 
good. It says when the motorcycle passes the car, the car is moving with speed 22 meters per second. So it's saying when they've traveled the same distance, the car is already on that flat bit that we've got to. That's how we know that the shape we're looking at for this blue part, the area of the blue part, is going to have to be a trapezium. And we want that distance to be 990. So for part D of the question, we know that 990, the area of this trapezium here, is going to be equal to, well, we haven't really given this a name, have we? Maybe we should give this a name. Yeah, we could call it X. Why don't we call that time there X? What would this time um, along the bottom be? 30 plus x, because that's to 30 seconds. It's got a little bit extra for 30 plus x. So it would be the average of the parallel sides, which is x plus 30 plus x, and it's multiplied by the height, which is still 22. So we get 990 equals 11. A half times 22 is 11. X, whoops, 2x plus 30. So we get 99 divided by 11 is 90. 90 equals 2x plus 30. So x is equal to 30. So the amount of time, that doesn't seem right. Yes, it does. Um, so the amount of time that it takes for this bit up here is 30. So how long does it take for the car to do 990 meters? 60 seconds, because it's this distance that's all the way along the bottom here. So the car is. 60 seconds, but we don't want the car. We want the motorcycle, which would be minus 10 seconds from that, which would be 50 seconds. OK, so you didn't need to draw a second line for this one. It was perhaps a bit confusing because in the previous one that we did at the end of Tuesday's lesson, we did draw that extra line. But in this one, we are not going to need to do that. OK. Part D of the question, I'm not going to think about part D yet because we're going to be doing some new things in today's lesson that will help us with that one that we've got there, OK? So what I'd like for you to do for me is to flip the page and to go to the next, the next exam question that is there. We'll start off. It, is, uh, it looks like a very big marks for the last part of this exam question. This wouldn't normally be worth um, eight marks here. It would not normally be worth that. So I think I'm going to see in about 10 minutes how much of this question that we've got done here. Um, you can either do it on paper. You want to do it, should we do it on paper and you can just talk to each other about it? OK, so let's do this on paper. I'm going to give you 10 minutes. Pardon? That question, yeah. It should say at the top, May 2012, question four. And we'll...